see. Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another one of my screencasts where I'll be using R and R Studio to analyze data I've never seen before. As usual, the data comes from the Tidy Tuesday Project, an amazing weekly data project in R from the R for Data Science online learning community. And as usual, I've been I'm doing this screencast live, so I'm looking forward to um, hearing from all of you in the live chat. If you have questions, if you have ideas for analyses of this data as you're seeing it being analyzed, uh, it's one of the really fun parts here is I can see your chats, and I'm interested in hearing what you have to suggest. Someone confirm that you can hear me? And uh, then, yeah, we'll get started. So what do we have today? We have Chopped. Chopped is a TV series that I'm actually not familiar with. Uh, so it's um, coming from Kaggle, but it sounds like it's a it's a it's um, an ingredient. It, it sounds like it's a cooking show, and let's take a look through this. All right, it's a reality show for chefs competing in a three-round contest. Unusual mixes, appetizer, entree, dessert, and uh, at, the, at the beginning of each, they get four mystery ingredients that create dishes. Uh, they expect to use, uh, are not commonly prepared together. That's really cool. Okay, so it's like a mixed mix of different kinds of ingredients. I know nothing about, uh, I know really nothing about cooking, so this is going to be definitely fun to, to, to take a look at. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> it is joined for two different sources. There's ratings. All right, so I can, and yes, there's one table in this data set. Sometimes we get multiple. Looks like we get one here. And what we have is season Things about the episode, the rating, the uh, notes, the episode notes, maybe that's text, um, air date, uh, three judges, four contestants, and ingredients within each. Okay, I have a feeling we're going to have to do a little bit of data tidying, because uh, if there's multiple ingredients and they're all in one column, we're going to have to do something with that. Okay, so I'm going to be using the Tidy Tools the R package, uh, and uh, let's get started. So I go to my project arm oh no I, I do now now I've been trying out where I say no I'm reminding myself now what do I do oh yes I say use tidy use oh, tidy Tuesday R use tidy template as I mentioned before I kind of want to um kind of want to uh to customize this template because there's some packages that I really want to use I'm gonna do library scales theme set theme light okay and uh, load in the tidy Tuesday data and it has one table called shot I can also remember see the readme if I go here all right <clears throat> okay and uh, I, I got my columns yeah, I don't think I need much more from the readme than I already understand, so I'm going to go ahead and view this. And then we can understand how I might need to reshape it. It's one row per season. Uh, pardon me, per episode. And notice each episode has a rating. All right, the episode has a name with a couple of ingredients in it. Uh, that's cool. There's three judges, an air date that is not a, would need to be, be parsed before we use the date. Um, and here we go. We have appetizer, one, two, three, four ingredients, four ingredients, three ingredients. Uh, okay, and if I'm looking through a little bit, is it usually four? This one has at least four. This has four. Okay, if I remind myself here, let's take a quick look at this. They, um, it's time to expire. The judge critique the dishes. Let me see. Hmm. And what I remember seeing is, oh, hold on, I just want to know how many ingredients typically occur. Uh, it says four mystery ingredients. Maybe it's not literally always four. I see at least one. Mm. Yeah, this case was only three, but that might just be missing one. Here it looks like there might be five, okay? Uh, so, all right, but mostly it looks like it's four, okay? And I got these ingredients. Um, judge one. Eric, this is going to be really fun. Uh, and we have contestants and some free text info. So some of them, most of them are chefs. Uh, looks like maybe some of them do, oh, some of them do it for charity. Uh, and um, there's executive chef, there's sous chef, which I think is like, an, like a second chef, like a uh, kind of a deputy chef. And um, all right, and then we have, so here's the, inf the information. 
ingredients. Okay, I think I have, and then episode notes, that's cool, some free text. I think I have what I need to get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start by, uh, I don't know if later I'm gonna be doing some cleaning, I'm definitely gonna do some rearranging. So I'm gonna start with chopped as a table. And I'm gonna start by looking at episode ratings. So my first question is, episode rating, uh, there are 569 episodes. This is a really cool data set. Uh, what I'm going to look at is, what's the distribution of episode ratings? Does it thing come from IMDb? Not every episode has a rating. There's one very low rating. Oh, okay. I wonder what that is. Uh, one of it's just bad data. Uh, arrange episode rating. <laughs> uh, it's called Worst Cooks Challenge. Uh, they really did not like contestants were previous winners and runner-ups for from worst cooks in America. Well, that's a, that's cute, but it's a gimmick. Uh, so I guess they did not. People did not care for that uh, for that episode. That's that's kind of funny. Uh, and uh, let's see. Worst. I can't read any more from this. Uh, all right. So then what I'm going to do is say. Um, I've done similar things when I work with The Office and I think Simpsons ratings data sets. I might just be interested in over the course of the show, what was the uh, what were the ratings. So what I do is I say series episode, geom line, no sorry, uh, episode rating, geom line, that's a good start. And I throw in a geom point, color equals season. Uh, actually, color equals factor of season. That's uh, not my favorite. So I'm going to actually say theme legend position equals none. All right, so this is every episode. There was one very bad episode and a couple other, and kind of it looks like there's a general trend. I'm going to learn a little bit more of that, about that trend. How? By with a group by and a summarize. I'm going to say group by, oh, what is it? Season, summarize, and episodes is N. You always want that. Average rating is mean uh, episode rating. Nothing else I can really do at an ep at a at a like episode level and say N A R M equals true. I'm actually going to filter not is N A not is N A episode rating before I do this because I don't want to include ones. I I want to set, show the count, the number of ratings we have for each. I don't want to show the number just the overall number of episodes. And now I can say season average rating geom line uh, and throw in a geom point, size is uh, is n episodes. Just in case there's some seasons where, I'm, see here we're missing ratings on a lot of the uh, episodes in the later seasons. Okay, now we actually do see there's definitely a trend. Uh, I used average, I probably could have used median, and it probably would have been pretty similar. Uh, is this the final season? Well, one way we can find that out is uh, arrange descending uh, um, ep season, nope, nope, season episode, that's the one. And the last one, what, if it's a recent date, no, it's not a, oh, hmm. So, oh, I don't know what happened to my range. Hmm. I must have clicked something by accident. Quail without fail, okay, so they're recent episodes. Uh, this might have been the last season filmed before the pandemic, or I guess it could have been a pandemic season. Uh, all right, so the... This season was in 2020. So I know some really, I was generally curious about, is there a difference between, okay, there are multiple seasons in each year, uh, which I think makes sense for reality television. How can I tell that? I'm looking at like, yeah, this is season three and it's still in 2009, same year. Okay. I could parse the date, but honestly, I don't think we need to parse the date. Uh, I, don't, I don't, because um, there's not much I'm going to do with it. I, I might just use season uh, from this point. Seasons are very me are meaningful. Month of the year, probably not. I wouldn't expect there to be a seasonal trend or anything like that. Is, does can we see a seasonal trend like every three? There's something like three episodes, uh, three seasons each year. No, not really. Uh, no. Okay. So the um. Uh, all right. So it looks like the last season didn't get a great rating. On IMDb, but there is also there are fewer that have a rating. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit. 
how I'm going to theme legend position is none. Lab season y equals average rating. What, why am I doing? Why am I looking at this analysis when I really want to predict things from, say, the ingredients? Uh, the reason is I want to. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The reason is that I want to uh, like get a sense of is are things confounded by time? And it looks like yes. The first two, two seasons were very popular. Then there's a second act taking place up to about season. 25 uh, that is pretty consistent, a big drop around season 30, and then it kind of goes back up for season 35 and onward. So what this is showing me is that if I'm doing something with average rating, I may need to consider the season as a, as a predictive factor or just filter for a subset of seasons that um, uh, like over here. Okay, so that's looking at the seasons. Do we have anything else that I would do with this? Mm. I might do something like arrange Descending episode rating, head 20, and do one of my favorite plots where I say episode name. I think what I'm going to do is change the name to be FCT reorder episode name. I'm certainly going to do episode, reorder episode name by series, by, sorry, by um, episode rating. That's the easy one, but I think I'm also, well, I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to say name, uh, no, average rating, name, GM call, uh, nope, episode rating. Here are the top episodes. Uh, and uh, GM call isn't great because these start at zero and it's not very meaningful. Uh, yeah, okay, and one thing this shows me is that, yeah, there's, there's, uh, you can only be like, um, in the tenth place. So this might not interest me as much as say, I mean I can, I could just have the like, top 50 or something. Uh, the general idea is, yeah, this is not like a, that interesting a, um, a graph because it's showing, okay, here's some of the best episodes. Uh, all right, uh, last, the last thing I am gonna do with it is add in, check out the glue package. If people haven't seen the glue package, I think I've used it a couple of times. And in the glue package, what I do is I say glue, uh, name, but I actually also within that want season dot episode number. It's like a way to, it's a way to do this with the, like, it's like glue is a play on paste. It takes, oops, it's not episode number, it's season episode. It's not that either. Oh yeah, it's, oh, I, I, I see it. Oh, uh huh, uh huh. Okay. Uh, what does this show? This shows that, um, oh, and see, around season 40, which is a very late season, did have one of the best episodes. What I did is I got this 40.2, 50 is too many. 25, I don't know. Uh, and then we have like WizKid, uh, WizKid Cooks, the season 40 episode that is very popular. There's like season one is a popular one, season 40 has some popular ones. If I revisited that graph I made earlier, you can cut, yeah, this is a way I prefer to show it. And most importantly, uh, check this out, uh, something is missing, da uh, the missing data uh, is messing with my, yep, the missing data was messing with my line. Uh, and something that I'd want to do here is I can add geom text. AES label equals episode name. I don't need I don't need the uh, season added there, uh, and then H just is one because I want it to be to like to the right of it. Oh, and most importantly, that's to the left of it. Right? Most importantly, check overlap is true. So that why did I do this? Because I I want to be able to answer a question like, hey, it looks like actually I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to make the line under the points and alpha 0.5, color is gray. I want The line is not that important. I want to be able to read on top of it. So this shows like, okay, worst cooks challenge. It was cool about this, I don't have to, I don't have to look at that, um, I don't have to look up that episode, uh, or like sort that episode to see, to see the, um, 
uh, what it is. Okay, so that's a pretty, this is a solid graph. They just want to understand things about the, the TV show. When I did this for the off, for the office, I, I was able to learn a lot from it. Um, but I don't, I'm not familiar with the show, so I haven't seen any of these episodes. So I'll keep um, moving. So let's get to the fun part. I know why you're here. We're here for the ingredients. Uh, the ingredients are going to be an absolute blast. Look at this. We've got chopped. Here we go. Uh, we've got three columns of ingredients. Appetizer, entree, dessert. I'm actually going to try something. I'm going to say season, season episode, episode rating, entre, uh, appetizer to dessert. I'm going to just grab these for a second. I might put back the others later. Uh, I just want to put, grab this so that we can like examine what happens a bit more. Because I need to I'm going to turn this into one row per, per ingredient. How do we do that? I'm going to pivot it longer because I want only one column for these three. I'll say the calls, whoop, the calls are um, appetizer to entree. The uh, names go to, um, I don't think I need to say names to. Yeah, I could just say uh, the names will become uh, meal and the not me. Oh, what's the what's the word for part within a meal? State course. Course is the word I'm looking for. Ingredient. I'm calling it an ingredient. Uh, oh, uh, does it need to be quotes? Uh, yo, yes, yes. The up the promise values too. Names. Oh, I got what happened. Names to course. They give it longer. Likes the names to be included. Names to course. Values. I'm still learning to use pivot longer just a little bit. All right, uh, that one didn't work. Oh, because I didn't include dessert. There we go. Course appetizer entree dessert. And now I can un. So now we have appetizer entree dessert. Appetizer entree dessert. Dessert. Uh, now I can actually use tidios unnest. Uh, oh nope, it's called separate rows. On ingredient, sep is a comma, and now I've got my ingredients. Uh, so I say ingredients, and I'm going to include the title. Why don't I include the episode name? And now I can now check that out with pivot longer and separate rows, and I have one row for every ingredient. Uh, as well as whether it's the what courses it is. So let's actually look at the ingredients. Sort true. There are ingredients that pop up multiple times. Not surprising. Uh, I can also I can also include um, what's the uh, the other one? Course. I can say course and uh, so for example, asparagus is probably often in the entree. Where is it? Wow, it's off. Oh no, it makes sense. It's, it's asparagus in the appetizer actually does make a lot of sense. I was wondering if it was in dessert. Uh, okay, so this lets us show what are the most common. We can, now we can say what are the most common ingredients. Uh, how to do that? I would say what I do for most common. I don't want to use head because I want to keep both the course and the ingredient. I'm going to use FCT lump of ingredient uh, ten weight is n is not equal to other. Now, like, just like that, I get down to twenty seven rows, and some um, ingredients will be will be replicated. And I can say now, gg plot, oh, and uh, next step, uh, ingredient is FCT reorder, ingredient n sum. I need to put the, the um, blackberries on top in this graph. And then, not necessarily the blackberries, it might turn out to be the asparagus, uh, but the stories I want the most common one on top, because I'm making a stacked bar plot. Uh, that doesn't look so stacked to me. And I need to flip, flip it on its axis, let's see. Because uh, I forgot to do fill equals course. All right, and these are the most common ingredients. Uh, I like this graph so much I can make more of them. All right, so number of episodes. Most com yeah. common ingredients in shop. And a couple more things. Of course, I don't feel like I need a y ac a y axis. Looks beautiful. So the story here is that the areas with um, we see there's entree appetizer, entree appetizer, blackberries once in an entree, usually in a dessert. Strawberries could kind of be in any of them, usually dessert. Uh, I also am going to want to reorder the courses, so I'm going to do that up here because I always want courses to appear in a particular order. 
For that, I use FCT relevel. It's similar to relevel, but I can put multiple things at, uh, at the top of it. So I say, what, what, is, what does that mean? I mean, I can say that the first two items in it are appetizer and entree. Don't need to put dessert. It's already there. And now appetizer, entree, dessert. Looking great. Uh, here we have 20. I bet I can do 25 and still look pretty, pretty good. Uh, Brussels sprouts, um, dandelion greens, cream cheese, bananas. Uh, as entree dessert. It is so frustrating the order of these pop up in here. I was kind of hoping it would go appetizer, then entree, then dessert. Uh, this is the order I like it, but this is not. Um, okay, because the one, hmm, it starts with the lowest one. That, that surprises me. Uh, count horse. See, it goes appetizer, entree, dessert, but the is I guess be, no, it's not. Is it because of the flip? I don't think it's because of the flip direction. So what I'm trying to do is I want dessert at the end. I have a sense of how to do it. I am going to try this. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try. Um, I got a quick thing I'm going to do. I'm going to say course is FCT rev. Uh, no, FCT rev. Of course, reverse the order. This makes the graph look like how I want it, but this is reversed. So I'm going to do, let's see if I remember this. Uh, there's a whole incantation here. Scale, fill, discrete. Uh, and it's le legend equals guide, legend, reverse equals true. Nope, that's not the one. Guide equals guide, legend? That's the one. Yes. Okay, second try. Uh, so the... um. Yeah, so here we here we have it by like by by course. The other way someone suggested is what if we fasted this by course? Uh, I think it's a, I think that's a great idea. So this notice that all that work was to get this like appetizer entree dessert. Uh, yep, so some common ones that are always appear in dessert. Somebody suggested we fast it by course. We abs that would be a great visualization, the top ones in each course. I'm not going to do it just because I think the group knows. I think if you've watched some of my screencasts, you know how to do it. And I'd be, I, I'm excited to get some of the more challenging ones. Uh, but it is a really good visualization idea. Uh, all right. A couple questions we have in the chat. Do we have prices for ingredients? Not that I know of. Not in this. Um, uh, I don't see anything here. I don't see anything. Oh, uh, that's not the one. I chopped. I don't see any. I don't see anything as prices, and I don't know how I'd get it. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I would get this, uh, the prices out of it. Uh, so, hmm. Hmm. All right. And uh, I think it would be interesting in terms of, like, uh, frequency of, of ingredients. Now, the um, is there any correlation between episode rating and ingredients in course? Love that. That's going to be a predictive modeling problem. Uh, am, I how, am I going to... I'm thinking for a second of how I'm going to approach it. The problem is we only have, like... There's not a ton of them in each of them, so and it's confounded by season. We're gonna, all right. So the answer is we're gonna have to get to that. We're gonna get to that a bit later. We're definitely gonna try it, uh, but yeah. The um and then I had a question from from Ellis. Yes, how from Ellis Hughes, uh, creator of tidy of the tidy Tuesday are package. How often does one ingredient appear with another? So that for that we go to the trusted YDR, my trusted YDR package. Why is a package that I developed that um. Uh, that finds that that, that uh, applies pairwise correlations or pairwise counts to tidy data. Uh, just last week, I gave a talk at the R conference in New York, um, which was on online. Uh, it should soon be up on YouTube. Uh, I gave a talk about the YDR package. So, to do add slides uh, to do link to slides from YDR talk. Uh, if you if you're if you've been to a lot of these screencasts, you've definitely seen the YDR package before. Uh, what's great about the wider package is I take these ingredients and then I say um, I'm actually going to add count ingredient um, which adds an end column to it. This is because some of them are only going to appear in one. I think those are, not, are two and those are not going to be so interesting. I'm going to take all the ones that appear in at least five. Uh, so here's one like baby octopus, bok choy, duck breast, etc. Now I'm going to say, um, do they appear? So uh, 215, 215 ingredients. Heck, at that I can even increase it a little. I'm going to look at 100, the 132 ingredients that appeared in at least six episodes. And now I'm going to say, uh, man, I'm going to do seven episodes. Because I like the number to be as high as possible while still having plenty of ingredients to play with. 
uh, what is plenty, so just up, ah, 64 is a very nice number, power of two. So the ones with at least eight ingredients. Why am I doing that? Because uh, if you only have two, it only pop up twice, you don't really have an opportunity to appear alongside another ingredient. All right, so the story is pairwise core. It's a function, YDR, where you say, I want to know the correlations among ingredients by what, what do they appear in terms of the same episode name. Can I quickly check there's no duplicate episodes names? If there is, I'm going to have to use the ID, the uh, season number, the season episode. Yeah, there's, all right, there, there, there is a duplicate name. I'm going to leave in the series episode. Because now I can say, Hairwise Core, what ingredients appear in the same series episode? Uh, sort equals true. And, uh, oops, that, that is fixed in the dev version of YDL, which I'm now going to install because that is, I'm feeling silly about that. Skip the updates. Here we go. Sorry for that. So, what appears together? This is in the same episode, not the same course. So this is our, oh, figs and olives appear together. Shishito peppers and watercress appears, appear together. Uh, do anything like, uh, any combinations of things that we can see kind of clusters of? To do that, we're, um, we're actually going to, we can make a network diagram. So I can say here are my correlation, my ingredient correlations. Oh, sorry. Head 50, G, and I'm going to use the, the ggraph package and tidygraph package from Thomas Peterson. And the ggraph, I like the uh, FR, I don't remember what it stands for, but it's a layout that I like of, of, of networks. Uh, I'm, I'm geom, what I remember myself, it's geom edge link, geom node point, and Geom node, the story of ggraph is that it's tidied its um, networks in the grammar of graphics, so link to ggplot2, and label is name, v, uh, repel equals true. Let's see what this looks like. It might just be lots of pairs of ingredients. Ah, we have a couple of chains of ingredients, so many so that I'm going to increase the number of correlations. That was too many. Here, what I'm experimenting with is a couple of different amounts of correlation. Okay. So here are clusters that appear together, and the other thing I'm going to do is say edge alpha is correlation. Oh, so I didn't even discuss what this is. These are pairs of ingredients that often appear together in an episode, not necessarily in a course. One of the challenges of this is that I actually don't think these are that meaningful because I have a suspicion this is this is like maybe only one co combined. So to do that, well, we can actually so correlations are really good for does this occur more often than we than we would think by chance. But uh, I'm look at this ingredients. I'm going to split this up into two steps. Ingredients filtered is add count and eight, uh, and then I say I apply the correlations. But I can also do uh, use a function I actually don't use a lot from, from YDR, which is pairwise count. What I want to say is pairwise count ingredient series episode sort equals true. Oops, I meant to do it on this. Ugh. Ugh, so many things to fix. Oh, maybe I just didn't really load the pack. Hmm. Oh, so the story is figs and oysters do appear together three times. And I suppose, and apparently we would expect rarer than that. Uh, all right, so they, they appear together three times, and that's like the strongest combination. Oysters, figs, yes. Yeah, still, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't think there's that much to get here. And why do I think there aren't clusters of ingredients? Though maybe, yeah, sometimes figs and oysters pop up together. Why do I think uh, three times? Why do I think there aren't clusters of ingredients? Because of what I saw in the documentation. Not this documentation, this documentation, uh, which is here. Where is it? It says something like um, here it is. The ingredients are often not commonly prepared together, so that's why I'm um, uh, that's why I'm suspecting that um, that. Uh, there's not going to be like giant clusters. Like if these were recipes, if these were ingredients in common recipes in restaurants, yeah, I would absolutely expect there to be clusters. The way we saw there were clusters in cocktails. 
but I was feeling that these are like, these aren't things that are linked together. Though actually I will say, duck breast quail eggs does not seem like a weird combination. Um, but the other thing here is that we don't know these are in the, that these are in the same uh, course. So the other thing I'm gonna try once here is we have a pairwise count, but I also have, uh, what if I tried this? What if I united the uh, series episode and the course into episode course? Unite is a function in, um, in, uh, in TidyR. It says, oh, this episode one entree, appetizer, episode one entree, episode one dessert. Um, and now that, and so now I can say, do any, what ingredients appear together within the same course? And the answer is, you, ah, that, this is actually really cool as a result. Uh, and I think it's pretty important. You never, there's no pair of ingredients on the show's history. I'm actually gonna write this in as an insight. I'm gonna leave in the correlation diagram, I'm not gonna delete it. Not sure this is useful since they appear across courses. Fun to do, always fun to do network plot, but here's the really important in, in insight. Do any pairs of ingredients appear together in the same course across episodes? We must have had a big Excel spreadsheet or something like that because it looks like, at least among the common ingredients, but the ones you'd most like, you'd most expect to see this, there's never the same pair of ingredients in history. Not a single pair, isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. It means they like uh, not a single time that that, that kumquats and duck breasts ended up in the same combination. So that's that's pretty fun, and that's a use of pairwise count to learn something. So this is why we're not going to be doing too much clustering on this. Uh, instead. We're going to ask a couple more questions. We're going to ask, first, are there ingredients that got more popular over time uh, across uh, in later seasons? Uh, so the way, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty straightforward one. Of these 64 that occurred at least eight times, here's what I'll do. I'm going to uh, group by ingredient summarize average season, mean season. That was pretty easy. N appearances, always need an N. Uh, it's always at least eight because we're working on the filter data set. Uh, and now I'll say first season, min season, last season, max season. And that's a combination of a couple of useful um, things. Some of them appeared in their first season and then yeah, so these are ones like artichokes, asparagus, they, they cover the entire uh, range. Uh, they didn't suddenly become popular. Uh, if I tried arranging the sending order of average season, we might see, are there ones that, aha, passion fruit has appeared nine times, all in the second half. Uh, fava beans have appeared 13 times, uh, sorry, sorry, eight times, not until episode 13, and their average is a little bit later. Uh, and it looks like figs, sorry, bok choy appeared in the first season, but it shifted, a, maybe shifted a little bit late. Hard to see. Let's see, what is the, the middle season? Is like 22 or 21. Okay, there's also ones they stopped using. Jimica, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to filter for only ones with at least 10, uh, be, just because I, I want to like make this as small as possible. So I'm going to say filter and appearances. Go to 10. Hey, 32. That's another power of two. And so we can say, okay, bok choy, figs, kohlrabi. Um, I could do counts over time uh, the way that I have sometimes with decade. One thing I can tell is that like, wait, where's my, yeah, and, and see, once I, once I, once I sort, it's like, with the section of rainbow carrots that first appeared in season 10, they kind of, they're, they're all kind of ubiquitous. Um, I don't know, maybe doing it more than 10 was, was, was a waste, because like, things that appear eight times are still a regular um, ingredient. Okay. Uh, all right, so the um, so this, I think, is, uh, is interesting. Last season, okay. Now, uh, so like last season, what, what, what were there any they gave up on? Sour cream, okay. So this, 
is how I'm going to visualize it. Uh, so it suggests that we could do a tie fighter graph. I would actually do a box plot here because we're interested in the distribution. So I'm actually going to say, check this out, I'll say, um, here we go, I want the top few and the bottom few. Uh, there are a few ways I can do, this of, of the ones that at least eight. Uh, there are a few ways I can do that, but I'm actually going to do slice one to six and tail row, can this work? Hey, look at that. Uh, tail row number, what is that, what, what, what is slice? Slice is, is a verb that says I want rows one to six and I want tail row number is gonna get one to, through, through all of these. This gets us the six highest averages, the six lowest averages. Um, that's kind of, just kind of a, a little trick. And then I'll say top uh, early late ingredients. And finally, I'll say take our ingredients filtered and uh, semi-join on early late ingredients by ingredient. Now I use this to filter it down. And now I say season ingredient geo box plot and one more uh, ingredient is FCT reorder ingredient by season. Again, these aren't quite common enough to be like, yeah, uh, okay. So th what is it suggesting? It's just there are um, there are things they gave up on, they kind of gave up on. So for example, um, uh, sour cream, uh, you have you've never you have, they have, you've seen no sour cream since before season thirty okay no jamaica with one exception since uh, season forty and uh, there are other ones like passion fruit that they only discovered recently but became became common since then uh, honestly I can't tell you this is not random like we we, didn't, we haven't done any statistical tests and there are loads of ingredients uh, it does kind of look like they invent they came up with passion fruit here that that seems unlikely they would do just happen to be here but we have any tests for it I'm not gonna polish it so. Let's do, let's do a model. Uh, let's actually ask uh, ingredient, uh, let's actually ask on the ingredient, uh, what ingredients are popular? What ingredients are popular? Which ingredients lead to an above or below average episode. Uh, episode. I'm sure if, if we were getting consulted by the chopped team, I'm sure this would be one of the things that they'd want to know. Uh, so let's let's do it. Let's do ingredients. No, it's. I am going to use ingredients filtered. In fact, uh, ingredients filtered. Why? Because I, I don't want to include ones that are really rare. I think those are going to be overfitting. Uh, so I'm going to do the ones that have at least eight. There are um, 64 or such ingredients. Uh, okay, and. Other thing I'm going to do, so yeah, what, what this is is actually that what I, what I have is I have select season, se no, series, episode, episode rating, course, and ingredient. I don't know if I'm going to be using the course for this. I think it might be a little too much um, uh, info. We'll see if, because yeah, we could imagine that maybe, oh, maybe strawberries are great in a, Oh, strawberries are usually dessert. Um, asparagus, great in appetizer, not great in entrees. We're not gonna have enough data to be able to tell that. I can just tell. I can. I can tell up front. Okay. So I can start with, and we're gonna have to look at confounding by season later. Is fit a predictive model of um, the episode rating explained by the uh, by the ingredient? And I think, think about this. I am gonna want to use season because of the, of the we can see from here that that uh, ingredient is not independent of season. Uh, and we can see that, um, you know, we can see ingredients not independent of season, and uh, season is not, um, let's see, where, where was I? Yeah, and season is not uh, um, total, total uh, loss by train of thought. Um, oh, yeah, and, and, and uh, episode rating we all saw is linked to season. Okay. There are a few ways we can do this, but I have like been trying out the tidy models package, so I'm going to use tidy models on this. Uh, and um, how would I go about doing that? Well, first I actually need to us uh, to pivot this to a wider form, and to do that I'm going to yeah I'm going to pivot wider the names from ingredient the um, I'm going to say mutate value equals one. Values from value, fill equals zero, 
Oh, nope, it's, uh, it's now values fill equals list value equals zero. I haven't even loaded the tidy models package yet. Um, here, so I've, I've, what I've done is I've widened the data. I'm also going to remove, no, I'm going to, I'm going to move course at this point. You never see something appear twice in an episode, so it doesn't matter. All right, so now we have this wide data set of, um, here we go, we have like series episode, episode rating, etc. I'm going to remove the series episode. And now we have our um, ingredients wide. This is the format we would need to use. Oh, and I, I almost forgot. Let's include the season. Uh, so let's say, let's include the season as a factor. Should I include the judges? I should, I'm not going to yet. Uh, like it could be that a judge uh, influences the uh, the quality of the system. Okay, so here's my ingredients wide. Uh, what can I do with, do with this? Well, if I wanted to know something like what's the episode rating, I could uh, as a factor of say season, I could say episode rating explained by season data equals ingredients wide. I'm not even using the ingredients. I'm just creating a, a linear model, uh, and I'll say summary. Uh, I think there's a there is a trend, a negative trend across seasons. Uh, that was something we saw earlier in the line graph. Okay, but how can I predict all of these at the same time? I can do it with a linear model, but when you have lots of predictors, you're going to need to do regularized regression. So, let's do this with um, with the Tidy Models package. I am still learning to use the Tidy Models package, so this is not always going to be as fluid as I am as as I am a little bit more accustomed to. It's a really cool package, and and it's um. It's also a little new, and I'm, and I'm just still learning myself. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do is say, I'm going to create a linear regression, this mode regression, and I'm going to say penalty equals tune. I don't know. So what I'm doing is I'm, um, I'm going to create a regularized regression, and I'm going to set its engine. Uh, take a look at this. I, need to, I can say, like, I'm going to do linear regression. I can set engines. Where is the engine? Oh, yeah. I can set engines to like LM or I can do it uh, for a linear model, or I'm, but I'm going to say GLMnet. Set engine GLMnet. All right, and uh, with varying tuning, with varying penalty parameters. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is say, you know, where to go? Uh, and where am I? All right, yes. And now what I'm going to do is going to say fit uh, this on, let's say, episode. Rating. Oop, I almost forgot to create a training and test set. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to say is say um, initial split. Wow, that that we got an F right there. Uh, initial split from the resamples package of ingredients wide. Technically, I'm using the ones that are common across both of them, so it's not it's not a perfect split. Eh, we're, we're going quickly here. So um, and then I have a training and a, and a test set. So I can say training on split data, and I have uh, 305 rows. Training set. Oop. I'm going to set the seed so I can get it back if I need to. All right, and this is the data set. All right. Um, now I'll say episode rating, fit episode rating. Explained by well, let me start with by season. Uh huh, and uh, look at that. I am forgetting something. Ah, okay. Something I learned today is that uh, is that GLMnet does not work if there's only one column. I should actually put that in as a that strikes me as a um, as a bug. I'm going to put in a bug report to do bug report for one one predictor in GLM net engine. Then you're right. All right. So that's a tidy models or a, or a parsnip bug report. Okay. So what this is, is I get back a, um, a GLM net object and I can actually say, go. Uh, and I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do much with the object, but the, um, uh, the story, yeah, so actually I'm going to say, let me see, model is this, here's my model, 
and it has a fit in object in it, and this is a glmnet object, and I can say class. Uh, oh right, yes, I almost for I, 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 yeah. So this this was just like creating a single version, and I say plot model fit, um, and this is not uh, amazing. It says there are two terms. I think one of them is this is an intercept. This is a slope. Uh, duck rest that was going to have no effectiveness. I can also use brooms tidy on this. Yeah, and this shows like oh season pops up and intercept pops up. It's not terribly uh, uh, exciting. Duck rest isn't popping up as anything in a predictive model. What I'm instead going to do is, uh, is say CV samples training set v fold CV uh, v equals ten. That is good. And what this does is create a set of resamples, 10 in fact. And now I can say fit resamples data, oh, um, yeah, so it's a training set. I think it looks like this. Oop. Y is constant. That's not good. All uh, right, CV samples. What is the first one in here? Uh huh. Episode rating explained by. Oh, yeah, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to dot. All right, let's remind myself what am I doing wrong here? Preprocessor object, preprocessor model formula. That looks pretty good. Nope, no good. Why is constant? Yeah, so what I understand is actually, I really don't understand why Why in any of these, why would be constant um, in the predict, in the predictor. Because like, here we go, uh, here's my training set, here's one of my training sets, and why the episode rating is not constant. Um, so, what if I drop a tuning parameter? Nope, no good. So by the way, where can I find uh, these? Uh, what I can do is I can I can find these messages in notes. Is it, uh, I got a question of do I need recipe? I don't um, need it because here we go. Missing wait, missing value or true false? Oh, it's not here. Oh, okay, uh, I think we it's 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 from the missing uh, predictors. I think. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say. Filter not is in a episode rating initial split. Uh, yeah, I should have checked the message first. Nope, uh, still problem. But uh, let's check out our first uh, our first uh, error. So this is this is the thing that they're just doing it's doing cross uh, tenfold cross validation on each of these non numeric argument to binary operator. Um, all right, let's take a quick look at our training set. Did I, did I include something? I have season. I have box. I have all of these. Do I need to clean up their names? Is that is that a problem? Um, if I did LM, would it work? It probably would, but it wouldn't be a very good. Um, you need regularization when you have this many predictors. All right. So I say episode. If I try just two samples, sometimes at least this will uh, non numeric argument, no good. Penalty is two, no good. It's fun when we have ten minutes left and I'm trying to solve a problem. Because I was because that's what I do when I try and learn to use package. I might go a little over time. You of course you're welcome to, to head on out. Um, but the um uh yes, yeah, so GLMnet Fit resamples. Let's see where what I'm missing. You get to see me learn this live. Is that exciting? Maybe not. I'm not sure. The um, penalty. Yep, that's good. Penalty tune is that is I feel pretty confident is right. Question is, do I need a recipe? I should be able to do this with just a formula, uh, in my understanding. Uh, so the um. See, like that usually would happen if the penalty. Oh, hmm.
I think I might need to tell it how to tune. Okay. Oh, shoot. That's totally it, isn't it? Oh, boy. That's totally... That's the thing. Uh, all right. So, tune grid. What is tune grid? Oh, that's totally... That's the thing. Oh, yeah, that, that's all the thing. It's not fit me sample, it's tune grid. Hooray! Uh, that's pretty close. Uh, I don't know what this uh, warning is. Correlation com computation is required, but estimate is constant as zero standard deviation. Estimate should, that should be surprising. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to change this to tenfold cross validation. Let's see if it always warns me. Okay, it always warns me. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm tuning the the, um, the training parameter. All right, and now why, why is that handy? Because I can take this and pipe it to collect metrics. And that shows me what is it for different penalties. And I can say, uh, so so this is a penal this is uh, across all of the folds. What is the average? Um, I can say at this penalty value, of a, so what is a regularized regression? I'm not going to do it today, but it, it, it um, adds a term that uh, penalizes coefficients. So I can say, okay, what is the um, penalty and what is the value of this and color equals dot metric. Uh, and I'll need scale x log 10. Okay, what this is showing is I want, generally I don't even really need a penalty here. It's not, um, hmm, hmm, okay, uh, it's not, I'm, look, I'm looking at this like, it, it, oh yeah, so, so the best value is a very low penalty. Okay, that's good to know. What is it at a very low, what are the predictions at a very low penalty? Well, I can find that or I can take my model, or I can say, oh, these are, this is, um, parameter search that's not a model and now I can take my model and fit it again so I'd say model spec is this parameter search is the tune this is the step where I actually use tuning collect the metrics from each uh, visualize them the mean squared error or the r squared I'm actually going to use just dot metric uh, it is RMSE, the root mean squared error. Uh, so this is suggesting we want a penalty up yeah, somewhere around here, but, the, but a very low penalty doesn't necessarily hurt it. Check this out. I'm going to use, that's because I was using ingredients filtered. I bet if I used more ingredients, that would start to, to have an effect. I, that's okay. I'm not going to dig into this one right here. Um, so, how would I show, let's see, yes, how would I, how would I show um, as a panel, um, how to show the actual interpretable values? This is me trying to find a parameter. Well, I need to fit the model itself. So I'll say fit training set, um, oh, and uh, set, what was it, uh, update, I think it's, no, it's, is it update parameters? I really want to say parsnip. I want to update the parameter. Well, I'll just redo it. Because I can't remember how to do that. And say penalty is, I don't know, I can, I can actually pick kind of anything here. It doesn't seem to make much of a difference. Uh, but I, I'll just, heck, I'll say, um, I'll actually type one, I'll just type one in. Hmm. And uh, then use, uh, then perform the fit episode rating explained by dot on the training set. Now, what's frustrating to me is it gives the, me the value at every possible um, penalty. That is a little bit frustrating. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just going to take this fit and fit. I'm going to take it, tidy it, and I'm going to um, 
Yeah, so I said season matters. Okay. Yep. And I'm going to view it. Uh, no, I'm going to actually filter for lambda is, I can pick any, kind of any value. Because uh, like what we're showing here is we pick we could pick very low, lam uh, low lambdas. Hmm. Man, that is, that is an, I, I'm just having a hard time using the cross validation with it. Maybe I'm, I, I'm probably missing something. Uh, I could basically say something like step is 30. <laughs> I could pick kind of a, of, of a penalty. And here it has a higher penalty than what we needed, uh, than, than we needed anyway. Uh, all right. Hmm. All right. So what do I, what am I doing here? Uh, what I'm saying is, here's my, this penalty is still down here, still not as good. What it's suggesting is that there are positive and negative uh, impacts of ingredients on the rating, uh, even when we account for, for the effect of season. Uh, so I'm picking like a particular, so when I tidy this, what I'm doing is I'm getting a set of coefficients, and then I'm picking the ones up to a certain point. Uh, this graph convinced me that I can set a low level of regularization, and haha. Did, anyone, did nobody catch that I am a custom, that I am completely missing that root mean squared error, lower is better? Nobody caught that. Oh, I'm so, oh man, oh man, lower is better. Note to self, lower RMSE is better. Go back to college, Dave. Hooray. Uh, so the, um, uh, so the problem is uh, we don't have any any ability to do predictive power in this model. The lower our term, the lower our term is, the higher the mean squared error. Uh, did anybody like notice that? You can be honest. Did anybody notice that uh, mean squared? We don't see a trend. Uh, oh, sorry, we, we we don't see any that. This is basically convincing us, like, yeah, we don't have enough data or there's no trend in the ingredients, uh, that anything we do to lower the, the threshold just ends up um, driving the the, uh, the root mean squared error up until it asymptotes at this really high point. So we do need regularization, which actually makes much more intuitive sense to me. Oh, man, did I did I miss that? All right. Well, the um, that was trying out tidy models for GLAMNet. It's more exciting when we find something, uh, but... Yeah, is the action, and I'm going to do one other question. All right, yes, but the nice thing, about, the really great thing about tidy models is I've created my CV samples. Uh, so what if I what if I tried a nonlinear model? What if I did a Rand forest? And I say mtry is tune and trees is tune and set engine ranger, I think, is a, is a model. So uh, RF spec. I might be missing the ranger package. That's odd that it, uh... Oh, and Rand Forest needs to say uh, mode is, oops, mode is regression. We're using, uh, we're predicting a, a numeric variable here, rating. So question is, can I predict rate episode rating from the, the frequencies of the common ingredients? Um, and yes, and here here's what I do. I do parameter search, Look at that! I'm, I'm getting uh, I'm having a blast here. Uh huh. Nope. No. Oh no! The problem with this parameter search is it's going to take a lot longer for it to, tells me. I'm going to recreate my samples, uh, but just two. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to drop the trees tuning so that I can just be a little bit faster. It's not that much faster. But this is really cool, though, that it's doing like the parameter search for me uh, across both of my samples and my all models failed, uh, which I expected. Um, here we go. I want to look at the details. Illegal column names and form formula interface. Okay, that's actually that's that's a very straightforward one, which is that this includes spaces. Um, the ingredients wise include spaces. How do I fix that? Uh, fairly straightforward. There's a great package called Janitor where I say clean names. Uh, there are other things I could have done for it, but this one makes them into snake case. Uh, so now they're all snake case, and I don't have to. And Rand Forest will support it. Uh, so the um, here we go. In theory, we're gonna find out. First, I'm gonna try it with just one. Nope. 
Oh, oh, because I don't have to. What am I right here? I need tuning. Yeah. Oh, I did not rerun a couple steps. I I missed a couple steps. What I do is I say, all right, I recreate ingredients wide. I read the seed. I do the split. I do the training set. Now the training set has the right names. I rerun my samples. I'm gonna do just two this time for the for the test. Hey, hey, looking pretty good. Pretty good, not perfect, because it's taking a while. All right, and now I can collect metrics. Oops, collect metrics. And I get it for the number of trees. Okay, this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna do just one more thing. I, I, before I do this, I'm gonna change a couple things. I'm gonna do five-fold regression, otherwise it might be too many. I am going to, what's the other one besides, uh, if you have to leave, you have to leave, but um, I'm gonna say trees is tune. All right, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna 10-fold regression, and let's see how long this takes. Why does it not give me a, a, an update on here's how long each step it takes? Is there a verbose argument or something like that? That would be nice because because I don't mind waiting a minute, but I would mind wet, mind waiting ten minutes. So what am I doing is um, tenfold random forest regression tuning to find the parameters of m try and trees. M try is how many um. It's, I think it's, what is it, it's how many splits you can have, and then tree, so random forest averages many weak learners, trees is how many weak learners you're averaging, and mtry I think is basically how strong each individual learner is. Um, this is not a machine learning screencast, Julia Silke does some fantastic ones where she introduces the tidy models package, but I'm, I'm already bored. Oh. So I'm going to, why, why can't I say verbose? equals true in this. Wouldn't that have been great? I'm gonna change it to five-fold regression, but I'm gonna keep the rest of it. All right. It's not perfect, because it means the training set is a little smaller than it would have been otherwise. Um, yeah, we probably need every bit of training that we can. I take it back. I kill it, and what do I do? Uh, I'm really, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just train on the number of trees. I'm going to ignore the M, the M try. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to ignore the, oh, no, nope, actually, I like trees more. I cannot explain why, but I like trees more. One thing I actually really like about this is there's so little code that is actually doing so much here that, like, I can just change one thing and I'm taking a whole different approach. In the old days, we would have had loops, or at least we would have had a bunch of tidy stuff going on. Uh, so the story here is that I'm saying, I want to say how many trees does a random forest model need. I'm going to train it on tenfold regression, where I train on 90% on a, on a, on a, on of the data and then test on the remaining 10%. And I'm going to apply that, uh, and then I'm going to do uh, uh, tuning. Okay. I'm going to let this run for a bit, and then I'll come back to it. Oh, but I, I can also say... I don't remember what the metric... No, it's probably going to be RMSE because it's regression, and I can ask a question like, so one thing I know is the, uh, one thing I know is the, uh, the null model has an RMSE of 0.49, I could have found that other ways, but I'm gonna be curious, what is the random forest RMSE? Uh, can we beat, can we beat a null model, a, a, like a dummy model? I haven't even, um, uh, I could, as I said, calculate that, that here, but we're low on time, and I'm gonna do it in terms of, trees, which is going to be the parameter we're fitting. All right, I don't think I need a, I might need a log scale, I'm going to find out. All right, letting that run for a minute, because I've got my big data of a whole 400 observations and I'm doing random forests on it. Uh, I wonder if uh, Tune Grid does parallelization, and if so, how I can how I would control that? Because there's no way each of these individual ones are taking up a lot of space. Hmm. Well, okay. Ah, this thing is cool. I think it's doing better than a dummy model. And uh, can I? Is that a thing I can do? 
um, to say, oh yes, I want, a, I want to compare it to a dummy model. I actually do, I have a sense of how I do that, uh, but I don't know, like, huh. Uh, okay, so one thing this shows is maybe if we do a random forest with like 500 trees, these are all, these are all very similar, uh, but if I had to pick some number, I might pick 500 or 700, and I get an, uh, uh, a cross-validated RMSE of 45, of 0.45. Okay, so, and then I'm probably going to apply that to my testing data. So I can do that with, uh, with model is going to be RF spec. Fit episode rating explained by dot resamples is nope not resamples just training data and uh, oh but it's not RF spec anymore is it oh I remember now it's like set where is my parsnip set? I can't remember how to set. There's a thing for setting the tuning for, for setting the tuning values and I can't remember it at all. Uh, silly of me. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Rand forest m try is 3, trees is 500. I haven't even tried the m try. Uh, set engine ranger Oh, mode is regression. Typo. And I thought I had a, a variable called training data up here. Training set it was called. And this is my model. Uh, the RMSC is, where is it? I don't see it. Uh, what I can then say is training, oh, oh uh, so what I can do is, oh yeah, I haven't, I haven't applied it yet. So what I can do is I can say predict model test set, is that right? Oh, uh, test of initial split. Nope, no, it was called, what was it called? I called it split data. You can tell I'm still kind of working my way through this. There we go. That's the prediction. I really wish there was an augment method, because what I'd say is, ah, now you see, I take my testing, I apply pred, I apply it split, and I say, let's bind it, let's and bind it to our original, uh, to our original split data. Um, oh, not split data, to our original testing, test data. Testing test set is what I call it. I don't capitalize. Test set. Just wanna test set. And check that out. I have doc pred and the episode rating. So I have predictions. And now I can actually ask. Um, uh, now I can ask RMSE on this data between dot pred and episode and the truth the episode rating and it gives you 0.47 uh, okay so that would be on my test set uh, with random forests I get 0.47 on the uh, on the test set uh, now question is what would a a dummy approach have been if there's a there might be a way out there to, to predict with a dummy model but I'm just going to take uh, the brute force approach and say Average is the silliest thing I can do. Is what's the average episode rating? That would that would be a, a model with just an intercept term, and then I ask RMSC average an episode rating, and the answer is we gained nothing. We actually got a little bit worse. All right. So the conclusion can't get a. Uh, we get the conclusion is we can't improve on a dummy model for predicting episode quality from season. Sorry, from ingredients. The silliest thing about that is I bet that uh, the silliest thing about that is I bet that if we just use season, we do way better. So let's actually try one more. Who wants to stick around and try one more model?
Yeah, everyone wants to stick around. Not everyone, but some people want to stick around. Let's try one more model. I'm going to try one more. Spline model. The other thing that I would do would be uh, notice the shape of that geom line. Oh, not that one. Not this one either. Notice that shape, it kind of goes up and down and up and down. I bet that there is a, that there is a factor here where, where the stories that we want to, um, to say there's a nonlinear trend among these. And I bet we get a pretty good predictor if we said, okay, use the, se use this, the, um, the season, but not uh, linearly. So what I, would, what I would do for that is say we have a linear model, uh, but with my training set, I would, have a, I would create a recipe where I say um, recipe of training set, and I say step. These are recipe steps. Natural spline. A cubic spline is, or, um, is, is something that allows to use a linear model, but predict the... Um, uh, is, is we can use a linear model, and we can say, okay, it goes up and down and up and down, and uh, but we can do excuse me, uh, but with a linear with a with a linear model we can represent nonlinear trends is what I was trying to say. So what I'll do is I'll say step ns Matt Dupree makes a good point the, the using all these food terms and the recipes package together is sort of confusing. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to say is recipe explained by oh, no no uh, episode. Rating by everything, and I'm going to step NS season. Uh, degrees of freedom is tune. I'm going to tune our degrees of freedom. In fact, I'm going to try out not using the ingredients at all, just the season, and say, uh, okay, this is a, um, a natural cubic slot. So now, what I'll say is here's our um, uh, take this and you do fit resamples. On our training data, does fit resamples take a um? Oh no, I was meant to say tune grid. Tune grid takes a. Uh, oh no, wait. Yeah, here's where I go. I say this is our recipe. Still in the the the, the flow, and then we say linear reg, modus regression. That's good. Set engine. I'm just gonna use LM. I'm not going to use um, uh, GLMnet. I'm not going to use any regularization. And say tune grid, uh, the recipe. With the, um, let's see, with resamples are, mo are what was the, um, the term, uh, what was the thing? Yes, CV samples. So what this will do is predict episode rating based on season. Uh, so that'll be like parameter, search, degrees of freedom. I didn't expect this to be slow, because uh, this should just be a couple of LMs. Episode rating explained by season on the training set. I'm going to start over. I don't know why I started over. I don't think that added that did anything. See, because it looks like this. It goes like the linear model form, linear reg, LM, spline rec. Oh, this, yeah, this, here we go. This is exactly the example I want I wanted to show where we said step NS, degrees freedom. Uh-huh. I did not expect this to take a while. Ooh, show best. That was the function I was trying to think of earlier. Things are slow. I really wonder. Is there parallelization? It totally is, but that's not right. Ooh, I see. So I register do parallel. I don't see where it tells me how to 
compel it to do parallelization. Hmm. Well, in any case, it was slower than I expected with the, with the data with the data set this small. Uh, but what we end up with is um, is cross validation, and uh, it looks like 18 parameters. So what I can do is I can collect metrics, and we learn what would the RMSE be for. Oh, and uh, filter dot metric is RMSE. And we learn more degrees of freedom is worse for cross-validation. Man, we are not gaining a lot of power here. Uh, so it's like two degrees of freedom. Is this an improvement? Who knows? It might um, it might be nothing, but yeah, adding more and more degrees of freedom will just overfit. Uh, I really thought that adding a, uh, adding a, a, a basis on the season term was going to help us, but what if it just doesn't? What if, what if there's nothing to do? What if I take this I fit it on episode rating by season data equals training set. And, uh, uh, oh yeah, this is the spline model, linear reg. And I say, I need to say in the recipe Oh yeah, this is where it gets. It gets it, this is where I always get confused. Rack fit. I choose two degrees of freedom, and uh, I say bake rack fit on training data, train set. Uh, not oh uh, juice. Oh, and prep on this. And that, ah, there we go, okay. Prep and then juice of the of the rest. And then what we do is I take it, I, oh, training data processed, juice the training data, oh, I don't want to do that yet. Man, I'm going all over the place for this. I wanted. I was curious. The RMC. It's not going to be very good. Okay. I, I could. But I am. I am fitting a model here, and it, it like mostly. Oops. <laughs> I look at look at me going all over the place. Uh, juice of. Oh yeah. Retain equals true. Yeah. I realize I'm, I'm. I'm getting a little bit sloppy here. Okay. I'm gonna stop it. Stop it there because we're already well over time. Okay. But the um. Uh, the story is I don't think we can predict episode quality based on ratings. Uh, and I also got a little bit more experience with tidy, with, with, uh, tidy models. So what do we learn today? We looked at episode ratings, most of which are eight to nine, and which do change a bit over time. Uh, we created this graph where we said, oh, the worst cooks challenge was a bad episode. Uh, we looked at some trends over time and that I thought would give us a little bit more help in terms of being able to predict uh, an episode's rating. Uh, but I, uh, but uh, it was sort of hard to, hard, hard to get anywhere there. And then what I did is I looked at I looked at the best episodes, but we didn't care for it. We looked at what the most common ingredients were. We looked at them across at courses, learned a little bit possible that FCT re-level and guide legend reverse equals true. We did a little bit of YDR, but we did note we with pairwise core, which I use a lot in these in these screen gas, but also pairwise count, which we don't use a lot. And that was how we learned the interesting fact that not a single uh, that combined with unite that not a single pair of ingredients have, has ever appeared together in the same course twice. Uh, and then we looked a little bit at, at ingredients over time, but I wasn't that conf I wasn't that confident that yeah maybe they gave up on sour cream and they introduced passion fruit. Kind of interesting. Um, uh, uh, Jacama became a lot rarer, but uh, there weren't quite enough uses of an ingredient to do much with it. And then I tried some um, uh, some. Then I tried some machine learning with tidy tidy models, and we didn't really get to a model uh, where it looks like the um, where it looks like we can we can reliably predict uh, what ingredients contribute to a good episode and which don't. It doesn't look like there are popular ingredients or popular combinations of ingredients. Uh, all right, I didn't even use judges or anything like that, and maybe it would have been worth a try. So this was another exploration to tidy models. I think next time I use tidy models, I'm going to try it on a data set where I, I jump into it right away. I did in Penguins uh, last month, but um, 
Yeah. All right. So that was uh, that's it for the screencast. Um, if you're, uh, I'm gonna be committed to GitHub. If you like this, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. And um, uh, I hope you had fun. I certainly did. I will see you next week.